Let's talk about time. There are many reasons I wanted to cover this topic. For instance, I'm absolutely fascinated by the Vedic concept of time, with all the names and numbers and extremes. Uh, but the ultimate reason that I'm so much captivated by it is hope. Hope in that Krishna's desire to have me back is much stronger than mine. I will explain it, but only at the end. Until then, let's look into what are the fundamental parts and elements of time. Why do we need to know about time? What does it mean when Krishna says, time I am? And how can knowledge about time bring us closer to Krishna? Eternal time is the primeval source of the interactions of the three modes of material nature. It is unchangeable and limitless, and it works as the instrument of the Supreme Personality of Godhead for his pastimes in this material world. That's Srimad Bhagavatam 3.10.11. Time is considered the impersonal feature of the Lord. Time is the basic measurement of the activity of our senses by which we calculate past, present and future. But in actual calculation, time has no beginning and no end. Also, time as we experience it only exists in the material creation. Well, these were uh, some fundamentals and definitions. Now let's see how time is established. The atom is accepted as the ultimate undivisible particle of which the universe is composed. The atom is the minute subtle form of eternal time. Atomic time is measured according to its covering a particular atomic space. To put this in simpler terms, time is measured by a calculation of the duration which is required for an object to get full or empty, like an hourglass. But let's start from the beginning. Atom, or paramanu, is the smallest particle of our created universe. Now, I don't, want, I don't wish to get into unnecessary discussions about modern science and protons and neutrons. I just quote Srimad Bhagavatam and I pray that you are also. Why is Atom important for us as devotees? In the Brahma Samhita 535, it is said that although Krishna is eternally living in Goloka Vrindavan, his transcendental abode, he is still present everywhere even within the atoms. Andantarasta paramanu chayantarastam. So because time is measured according to its covering a particular atomic uh, space, we can understand that the time and space go together. They are inseparable. Let's go through these different sizes then. Two atoms make one double atom. Three double atoms make one hexatom. This hexatom is visible in the sunshine which enters through the holes of a window screen. Three hexatoms is one truti. From this point on, uh, we can relate to time in respect of how we perceive it in our own lives. 100 trutis is one veda and three vedas is one lava. Three lavas is one nimesha, which is 8 fifteenth of a second. Gopis cursed Brahma, the creator, because he created eyelids. And since the gopis had to blink, like we all do, they lost sight of Krishna for that tiny amount of time. That blink, that half a moment is called Nimesha. Three Nimeshas is one Kshana and five Kshanas is one Kashta or eight seconds. Fifteen Kashtas is one Lagu, that is two minutes. And 15 Lagus is one Danda or 30 minutes. Two Dandas is one Muhurta. Although we all know this, but just for the sake of it, I will mention that time is relative. A year in a higher planetary system is much longer than a year on Earth. And beings on higher planetary uh, planets live for extremely long periods of time, by our estimation. For humans, therefore, three Muhurtas is one Prahara, three hours, and four Praharas is one day is 12 hours and also for praharas is night 12 hours 15 days uh, and nights is one fortnight 
and which is two weeks and two fortnights is a month that is one complete day and night on the pita planets two months is one season and six months is one complete movement of the sun from south to north two complete movements of the sun from south to north is one year 360 human years is one demigod years on Svarga, Martya and Patala planets. 12,000 demigod years is one Kalpa and one Kalpa is divided into four Yugas. Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dvapara Yuga and Kali Yuga. Above the three planetary systems on Satya Loka, Brahma, Brahma's planet, 1,000 Kalpas is one day of Brahma, which is Maha Yuga and the same for one night of Brahma. There are 14 Manus in 12 hours of a Brahma. One Manu lives 71 Yugas, this is called a Manvantara. The first 50 years of Brahma's life, Pararda, is called Brahmakalpa. We are now in the Shvetashvatara Kalpa or the 51st year. 100 years of Brahma is one Nimesha or less than a second for Krishna. And here it is, the main reason I really wanted to talk about time. If you consider the fact that our entire existence is so insignificantly small comparing to the fact that we exist in between the breeding of Mahavishnu, all our issues, problems, difficulties and tribulations and all our joys and delights in many many lives we go through really seem insignificant and realistically, they are insignificant. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Time I am, the great destroyer of the worlds. To understand this statement in context of our own lives, we have to look into the reason why Krishna made this proclamation to Arjuna. Srila Prabhupada says, Arjuna was not in favor of the fight and he thought it was better not to fight, there would be no frustration. In reply, the Lord is saying that even if he did not fight, every one of them would be destroyed, for that uh, was his plan. If Arjuna stopped fighting, they would die in another way. What is Krishna actually saying uh, is, no matter what reasons we find to avoid the performance of our duties, our best way forward is still to align with Krishna's desire and perform uh, those duties because Krishna in his eternal form of time anyway concludes everything. If we decide to work with Krishna, we will benefit eternally. If we not, we will stay here for longer. The whole experience we have uh, we have been given by Krishna to exploit this material sensation why we will think ourselves to be God is basically just a fraction of a second for Krishna. We matter to him so much that he can't bear the separation. Therefore, with his inconceivable power, he creates this material existence in such way that we perceive it as eternity, whereas it only exists for a moment. So I say to you, don't get too serious with this material world. Instead, get serious with Krishna consciousness and improve your prospects to going back home, back to Godhead at the end of your life.